Hello. 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 My name is Emma. I am here at the BookCon in Chicago, Illinois with Michelle Mee. So today we're going to be doing a bit of a Q&A, asking some questions about her books, and what's next for her and whatnot. And I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, it's fun talking. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for agreeing to do this with me. At least it's funny. I'm losing it all for you. <laughs> oh, all good. Like the one day I need it, really. <laughs> Alright, so my first question is to introduce yourself to the author by telling us a little bit about all of your works in less than 10 words or like phrases. I, oh, do I, should I be counting up? <laughs> I have written 26 books in many genres. For you. Um, that was great. No, no, that was <laughs> very impressive. Do you want to talk a little about The Glittering Court, which is for you as a book that recently came out? Yeah, The Glittering Court uh, has not been out that long, and it's uh, the first book in a new uh, trilogy that I'm writing, and it's a little bit of a departure from my previous works. It's uh, set in this fantasy world that uh, is inspired by real historical elements, although it's not it's not a true historical. So people reading it will see like a parallels to Elizabethan England, the early American colonies. And uh, the premise of the book is that there's this sort of school slash business where comic girls are sent to, to be ladies and then shipped across to the new world in the hopes of making great marriages with wealthy men. Uh, but these girls start making their own decisions and breaking the rules and they get caught up with heretics spies and pirates. Uh, it's a lot of fun. And one of my favorite things about the series is it's a trilogy, but they're not sequential. Each book is a complete story. Uh, and when you get on to the next book, it kind of resets to the beginning of the timeline. And so you get the whole epic journey from a different girl's point of view. And so you can read them, like I said, any order, but by the time you've read them all, you're going to have a lot of questions and holes filled in. So it's fun. Yeah, I remember, because I, I recently read it and I had finished it, and I was like, wait, so many questions though, how is this going to get resolved? But I think that's a super unique part of it, is I hear all about there's a million different books with different points of views, multiple points of views, but I've never heard of anyone writing a whole book setting each other's different perspectives and having it tied together at the end, and I think the historical elements that play into it are really super, super unique. Yeah, it's fun, and it's super hard to do. Um, I had to, I mean, I had to draft all the timelines for each girl on a whiteboard to make sure they line up, because you can't contradict something, yeah. and the scenes they overlap in, you got to make sure the dialogue matches. Yeah. So it's a lot of work, but I think people will like it. Okay, yeah. so my question was, Saki was the first book you wanted to publish, or did you have a lot of other projects you wanted to uh, it was my first published book. Before I, I wrote Succubus Blues, I, I wrote a book, I guess, yeah, that's true, before I published it. But before I also wrote Succubus Blues, I did write uh, another book, uh, which was this kind of sci-fi book with supernatural elements. Uh, I finished it and it was a mess, and I said, no, 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 I can't publish this. Uh, so I went on to Succubus Blues, which is a much tighter book, and then began my paranormal stuff. But that first book, eventually got cleaned up and became Game Board of the Gods, which is one of my adult novels. So it wasn't entirely lost. I, yeah, I used, yeah, I used the source material. That's one. wonderful. I was going to ask, like, are you content with Secrets of the Baby first published novel? Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, it, it's my baby. I <laughs> I love the humor. I love the, you know, it's, it's it's wacky. It's heartbreaking. It's all the things I love. So. I found it really interesting. I, I didn't know that you had written this, like, first books uh, later in it, but I think that's really interesting. Yeah, you know, it's for aspiring writers out there, just don't ever give up, or if you have to put a project aside and move on, you know, it's nothing's ever gone forever. It's very, very true. You might just, like, not be at the right time in your life to, to write that That's exactly, exactly it. So what is your typical writing process like? Do you have certain music you listen to, a snack you like to eat, or perfect writing location? Uh, I have to write in the most boring environments ever. Uh, I, I listen to authors who, like, tell me about their cool new age offices or they go to coffee shops and I'm so distractible uh, I can't do that I'll start paying attention to what's around me so my office it's in my home it has taupe walls and taupe carpet and I don't listen to music I mean I drink coffee or snack while I'm writing but I just I just kind of need to focus in on the work yeah. I think that's definitely something that can work for everyone and everyone's up to that individual writing process. So a lot of your series are focused more on mythical themes, like vampires and succubi and like so forth. So when you're writing something like um, the Glittery Court, what was the kind of inspiration to take some great paranormal aspects that you're so known for? <laughs> you know, I just love all genres, really. I've read widely my whole life. It just kind of happened that the one that hit and kind of 
you know, caught the public attention, happened to be Vampire Academy. Uh, it wasn't that I came into writing like, you know, I'm going to write vampires for the next 50 years. Uh, if I could, I would write all sorts of genres. And that's tricky to do because, you know, people love you for a certain genre. Uh, but all of my, you know, we're, we're usually only sliding over one genre. It's not like I'm suddenly writing spy thrillers. You know, even the glittering chords are still a fantasy, you know, less, less magic and supernatural beings. But it's, it's still that imaginative thing, which I love. It's great. It's really great. So if you were to publish a series of novellas off of the characters or other worlds that you created, have you ever thought about, like, where your characters go after you finish with them? <laughs> Yeah, I definitely think about that. I mean, even writing any series, I know the end of that series. I have to be thinking ahead to, to the end game, and I often do think about what happens after them. So I have some ideas, you know, past series, like the Succubus series, the Vampire Academy series. Uh, I know some of the things that happen. As far as writing novellas, that's tricky because uh, people often think, oh, a short story, a novella, it's less words, it's easy. Uh, it's actually harder because... Every word has to count more. Um, and I'm a scrawler, you know, I just do these books on and on. So I love the idea of doing novellas about characters, but it's it's a it's a craft that I struggle with. No, I completely understand that. And also you do have this amount of bloodlines. So like you have been able to do that like in a more expansive way, which really is so far as I really think that's kind of like Yeah, it's really good. What has been the most difficult part of being a the most difficult part of being an author is just answering to deadlines. Um, it's, it's tough, you know, the, sometimes the idea is not coming together, even when you're a meticulous outliner like me, you find out sometimes, you know what, that, that is not logical, and then suddenly the time's ticking, you know, because it's what to do. And so that, that can be a tough part, trying to do that. And then if you throw in uh, promotion and publicity, uh, like what's going on now. I'm writing the second glittering court book, but I'm also on tour here. Book one, and it is so exhausting being on tour. I love it. I love meeting fans. But it is, you know, you get back after signing to your hotel and you're just like, oh, my gosh. And so that's a tricky part, too, you know, and I'm still trying to meet the deadlines, but it always it always works out. Okay, so before we head out, I wanted to do like a quick round of uh, game call, like most likely two, where written so many books to me. So you, have <laughs> so you got a lot of characters. I have some kind of like high school superlative-ish um, questions and whatever character first comes to mind, go for it. Okay. Or you feel free to pass if you're like, uh, I do okay. I my best. So I'm always so horrible at these fun questions, but I will, I will try to be fun and give her good answers. I'm sure you're so comfortable talking about your books and it's like, what's something new? It's like, you know, that's, that's kind of it. People will say like, oh, I bet you'd love a new question. And I'm like, it's kind of scary answer. sometimes, you know? I got to go with you, but go ahead. So, whatever comes to mind first. Uh, most likely to be late for their own wedding. Uh, Rose Hathaway. Ooh. Most likely to stumble home from the bar at 5 a.m. Adriana Boshkoff. That was a good one. I didn't even think that was Yeah, you know the answers. It's like a hard one. Most likely to bake you cookies when you're having a bad day. Ooh, that is tough. Uh, I would say, actually, uh, Eddie from the Vampire Academy mm -hmm. series. And a little secret. The secret of talent, you know, talent. He's tough. He's the soft side. Well, funny that you say that. The next question is most likely to have hidden talents. Oh, that is Eddie. Also, <laughs> yeah. You asked if I think I head to them. I, I can see him like secretly writing a book too. Yeah. Most you know? <laughs> likely to win the lottery but lose the ticket. Uh, that would that would probably be Adrian again. Yeah. Yeah. Adrian. <laughs> Poor Adrian. He seems so irresponsible. He's a good guy. Right? Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the bus that's peaceful, but who would be most likely to listen to Hamilton? Oh, my goodness. Wow, that is such a good question. Uh, I would, like, Sydney would listen to it and then start, like, being like, you know, this part is not historically accurate. <laughs> so I'm not sure she would get as much out of it as she perhaps should. I think she definitely She would. She'd want to check it out. <laughs> most likely to quietly take over the world. Uh, that would be a Rose's father. Do that. He's always got something going on. Yeah. Always got some sense. Yes. Most likely to be for the movie. Uh, Sydney for sure. I, I don't even know if she watched the movie actually. <laughs> and most likely to be watch the movie but not read the book. Uh, that would probably be Rose. Yeah, Rose would just be like, ah, I don't have that time. What's the? <laughs> and uh, finally, who would be most likely to start a revolution? We'll start a revolution. Uh. That's good. You know, it might be interesting. 
which is surprising. I mean, he's kind of content right now, but he's he's got kind of the most you know rebellious discontent with the status quo. So I don't know. Let's see. And just for a final question, what more do we see from you in the future? I know you're working on what you want to see with the moment, and do you have anything planned, or like do you have anything you can tell us about book two? There is, I mean, book two is going to be from Mira's point of view. So Ooh, I was wondering if this would be fun to see. Yeah, <laughs> you know, she's sneaking around a lot in book one. And so for people that are, you know, people are confused, I don't understand what she's doing. You'll find out. It's, it will start to make sense. Uh, so that's, that's my priority right now. Um, right then, we'll see. There's nothing else concrete. Uh, Age of X3 is coming eventually, but I don't have a date on that. And then as far as other projects... Some people are very excited about that. You're signing it, which I'm like, it is true. You know, it does not, it doesn't have the huge following as the Vampire Academy series, but the people who follow it are are hard. So that's fine. Well, thank you so much for being on my channel. Thank you. Um, that is it for this video. I will definitely leave all of Shelby's links in the description for social media, her website, the big pages, all that fun stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. Now, see you soon. Bye.